I am with Robin Robertson, and I'm so honored that you are here uh, with me. When I was doing promotion for World Class, Robin interviewed me as a guru of homeschooling who has herself traveled the world. Robin has two kids, currently ages 13 and 11. She's a trained ESL teacher, has worked in the public and private school systems, and she's an advocate for homeschooling and self-directed learning, and she currently sits on school boards. So she's, Robin plays this really, I wanna say, interesting role where you can really bridge the public-private school and homeschooling kind of, I don't wanna say even divide, but you really understand all areas and bring them together. So. Hopefully your, um, your knowledge and wisdom right here will be invaluable to, to all watching who a lot of parents and educators are, are, are in an unprecedented situation where they are homeschooling and working with teachers at the same time. So if we can get going, I'd love to ask you some questions. Yeah, please do. Thank you. How do you think um, schools and educators should be managing this time? Um, well, communication is huge between families themselves, as well as between schools and families, families in the schools. I think that is the most important thing. Um, but at the same time, I think we should really be realistic with our expectations. Right now, it's a time of crisis, really, for many, many people, and it's the first time around. So I recommend not setting the bar so, so high, uh, just because really we're dealing with so many emotions as well right now. And I think a big thing is getting our children involved in the process, communicating with them, getting them involved with the daily life. And if you have a work schedule that needs to be planned in the week, for example, um, have them be part of the process and have them be part of the conversation with you so that they know that they're an important part of the family or the team. You know, we're a cohesive unit. And if your kids are going to school and are out of school right now, that school is usually just a sidebar or a part of that other cohesive unit. And that's what we really have to look at is that we are all supports to our unit, to our whole. So we need to work together and communicate as best we can. So are there any examples of what you're doing at home or what you're telling um, or what you're helping people within your community to do? Um, yeah, I think there's, there's a few things. I mean, for us, I think normalcy is what a lot of families wanna keep. So I definitely suggest trying to keep things as normal as you can, not too off what your regular rituals or routines. We have what we call our family rituals, and we've kept them no matter during this time or otherwise, but it really keeps us kind of in a constant flow together. So for example, every morning we have a regular family ritual where my husband and I get up first, we have our coffee and we talk, and we usually get up quite a few hours before our kids do. And then once our kids are up, um, it's time, my husband's usually already at work, so it's time that I'm present with them. And they know that when they're up, I'm available for them. I'm present for them. Those times before is my time in the morning, but once they're getting up and going, then I'm there. We usually do something like my daughter and I read together out loud on the couch and snuggle and have morning hugs. And when my, my son gets up, it's, you know, a good morning hug, see how he's doing and he usually goes to his music to his guitar and plays guitar. And that's kind of like his meditation, I guess, in a way, really. And then we get breakfast going. But it's uh, a time for me as a parent that also how everyone wakes up, it really sets the mood, one, for our entire day. And as well, I can really see where they're at and where I'm at. And so I also have an idea of how the day is going to be framed and maybe what we need to be more present with because it's usually pretty telling fairly soon how they are and what they say. So things like rituals like that in the morning or throughout the day, um, and then also having fun, being engaged and learning alongside them is really important. And that's something that as you say, our kids usually know what we're not saying. So uh, if we can communicate, but at the same time, know that we're there and available as well. I love that, the rituals, the taking the pulse throughout the day, um, reframing, those, those are really important points. What, what in, in your um, experience do you think parents and educators, kids could be doing to, to prevent themselves from falling behind? 
Um, I mean, the, there's so many things that you could be doing, but I think right now, as well as getting very centered, um, really, because this is a time of many high emotions, before we start worrying about the future, which right now is actually fairly uncertain, none of us know the outcome. It's kind of like putting all your worries into something that might, you know, we really don't know what's going to happen right now or how long this is going to be. So I think the best to prepare for the future is be present, prepare for the present and just be in the present. Um, so communicate, again, communication and connection is really important. Um, make time for your kids and also family time to be part of a conversation. Um, but also at the same time, while, while we're connecting and communicating, there are other things that we can do in daily life that maybe doesn't, don't seem academic or schooly, but still involves our kids in doing things that are very meaningful, which I think really when something is meaningful, that's when we take the most learning out of it. That's when it usually sticks inside of our bodies and brains. So things like cooking, you know, we all need to eat. So the family or the kids can be involved in preparing the meals or planning the meals. Um, and that's from young until old. I know our kids, when they were toddlers, they started helping prepare. They, we taught them how to chop food safely. They could mix things together. Um, they can be at the stove with us and know how, you know, what's safe and what's not, and they could stir things on the pot, but coming together, but also having those practical life things to do, taking care of pets, um, doing some kind of cleanup, planning the grocery list, things like that are all important aspects that we might not think as bookish, but still have a very practical meaning uh, learning and learning to them. I think that's really interesting, and especially because I'm in New York City right now in, a, in an apartment, and um, we feel quite confined, but that family time and what we're doing together is really important, and I think also those are things that we don't really learn in a formal schooling environment, all those, all those uh, tasks that you, just, that you just mentioned. So from a personal perspective, I'd like to know, because you are a homeschooler yourself, how do you find time and space for yourself when you have the kids at home 24 <laughs> seven? I think that's always one of the best questions that doesn't always get asked actually. <laughs> yeah. It's easy about the kids and what they're learning, but you know, self-care is just as important, actually if not more important, because if you're not taking care of yourself, your family's not well taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I, I have found the rituals that work for me over the years. And that is, I like my sleep. I know that I go to bed at usually the same time. I go to bed fairly early every evening, just because I like getting up in the morning. Um, my kids are older. They're pretty independent. Uh, we don't have strict bedtimes for them because they are homeschoolers. Mm -hmm. So because I go to bed so early, they go to bed, they put me to bed and, and they go to bed on their own. But then that also gives me time in the morning to have my space. I, you know, I practice meditation. I like to read and I do my work in the mornings. So that time in the mornings when I get up very early is my space and time and my quiet reflection time. And then that also sets my day. But at the same time, things like exercise, um, getting fresh air as much as we can right now, and being active all help with the, you know, healthy body and mind. And sometimes if I'm not alone. It's something that I do with my kids as well. I encourage them to come. You know, right now where I live, it's still winter time. <laughs> so snowshoeing is something that's been great for us so far because we actually don't have a lot of people around us. So we can go out and do those active things. And I invite, it's an invitation a lot as well, right? I invite them to come with me and be part of life and those rituals that I do as well. So it sets, it models the example for them too. That's really interesting. It sounds like you really have the intention to create space for everybody and to, to make sure that you have your time in the morning, which helps them in turn throughout the day and they have their activities and, and it's, and you appreciate your time together more. I think if you have those, if you really have those kind of set, set spaces and boundaries. So that's really interesting. I love to ask you uh, to, to end this. Um, I want to leave people with a little bit of hope and optimism through this. Do you see something new that you've observed that you like to share or opportunities that have become uh, available potential? Um, I think there's 
You know, I think there's many new opportunities that have come about because of this. I think there's going to be many new things that it will be coming down the pipeline as well. Um, but really, you know, I think the opportunities in our broader world, one, I, I've actually seen a lot of people reach out more, I think, than we expected to. And I think that's a great example for, you know, myself and our, all of our kids, our younger generation, to see how people have actually been so supportive mm -hmm. and caring. And it really puts it out there to create a, you know, a better world, I guess, really, you can say. Mm -hmm. And even other opportunities for learning. And just in that way, there's been so many learning opportunities, classes and, mm -hmm. um, you know, free audible, you know, books and things like that, that are now offered for free that I think gives access for many others that maybe didn't have access to those things too, that they can now get in touch with and add that as well to their life learning. So as a homeschooler, I'm always looking at things like that, that you know, for the broader community, for anybody, whether they're homeschooling or not, there's a lot of things that we now can tap into and learn and use for our learning and learn about that wasn't really available as much before, even cost-wise, right? So yeah, there's been many great things happening. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's, it sets a great platform for lifelong learning and being self-motivated to have that intellectual curiosity. Absolutely. That's exactly it. That's fantastic. Well, Robin, thank you so much. I hope to continue this conversation and I hope people reach out to Robin too. She has a fantastic podcast. Honey, I'm homeschooling the kids and she has a huge social media following. And like I said, she is the guru for all things homeschooling and public and private and bridging all that. Um, and hopefully, you know, I, I look at you as a model because I hope that in our country, there seems to be such a delineation between different kinds of schooling. And, I, and, and we should really be working together to share our resources and to support one another as best we can. You know, I agree 100%. <laughs> so thank, thank you, you so much, much, Robin. It's good to see you again. You too. Thank you. Thank you.